I'll see a little eyeball, but if not, if we're just recording, I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna start on our chia seed pudding. And to do that, I am going to start with my chia seeds. So I am using white chia seeds and the reason I'm using white um, is because this is a light colored chia seed pudding, so I don't want to um, use a dark, uh, the dark black color because then I'm gonna have gray pudding and nobody likes gray pudding. So I am going to toss these into my Vitamix, and here's my handy dandy Vitamix, and um, I'm going to add three cups of milk to my Vitamix. So I'm using an almond milk, but feel free to use whatever you want. Um, and if you have a um, soy, if you have a nut allergy, um, you want to use a plant-based milk, you can use an oat milk or a soy milk. Um, and if you are a milk drinker, then you can use regular old milk. I'm just going to use the gauge of the Vitamix so I don't waste another dish. And I'm just going to pour my milk up to my three cup measure. I had, by the way, um, for one recipe, uh, I used one third of a cup of chickpeas and one and a half cups of milk. Um, I'm doubling this so I can have dessert. I'm going to use dates. Um, so dates are gonna be my sweetener of choice. And um, what I did with them to make sure that they were okay is that, um, that they were gonna blend up really well is I soaked them. So anytime I'm using a dried fruit, I always soak it ahead of time so that it can get big and plump. Now, one thing you really wanna be careful of when you're using dates as a sweetener is that they have a pit. And so this pit is really hard and would not make any nice noises in your, um, in your blender. And so it's, what you do is first before I soak them, I squeeze the date and I open it up and out comes the pit right there. So that's one that I'm gonna save for another time. Dates are delicious, they're naturally sweet and they contain their fiber. So one of the nice things about using a whole food sweetener is that instead of just getting that surge, that spike and that crash of uh, blood sugar, you actually get a more even keel in terms of your, hello out there, whoever just joined us. Um, you get an even, um, an even distribution of sugar. You're not gonna have that up and down crash because it contains fiber and other antioxidants. That's a good source of magnesium. And I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna drop them right into my Vitamix. And for um, an added oomph, I love zest. So I'm going to take my zester. Actually, I have a really nice zester and I left it somewhere and now I can't get it back. Um, I'm going to just take the end of my um, zester and I'm gonna just rub it against the side of the lemon. And I use an organic, I use organic lemons whenever I can because I um, love to use zest. And if you're not a zester, then using, um, consuming a food like a lemon or an orange, anything that has a thick peel, it's not necessary to get it organically. It's much better to eat these foods than to not eat these foods. So conventionally grown is a-okay, except when I'm using the peel, I do like to make sure I'm using um, an organic fruit if possible. And if not, then I just make sure I wash it really well, try to get up any pesticide residue if, um, if it's there. And so for one recipe, I would use one lemon. Um, and you wanna stop when you hit what's called the pith. So the pith is the white part of a, um, of a lemon or an, any citrus, and it's bitter. And so you wanna stop before you get to the bitter part. And because I said I was doubling this, I'm just gonna do it twice. And I've washed all my lemons. And the cool thing that I'm gonna do with this is that in our next dish, our hot dish that we're gonna be making, um, we are going to use lemon juice, some fresh lemon juice into our stew. And so now I'm just gonna first zest in here, and then I've got my fresh lemons to squeeze, excuse me, for our Spanish chickpea stew, which is what we're gonna stew on up in one second. So. Um, as I'm doing this, just a little bit of background on myself is I am a plant-based chef. I um, teach other people how to do what we're doing right now and how to consume more plants. 
I have reversed um, two different autoimmune conditions for myself. One, chronic migraine person, and the other is that I have um, Raynaud's disease, which is a circulatory disease. So when I changed my diet and I began to eat more and more plants, um, and actually went gluten-free, uh, the first thing I did was that, is that my um, Raynaud's went substantially way down. Uh, my inflammation, my swelling got so much better. And so then I continued my journey and I went further and I just learned so much about the power of fiber and the power of antioxidants in our food and how so many of us don't get anywhere close to the amount of fiber that we need every day. Um, so that's just a little background on me. I'm also a um, eighth grade science teacher, not teaching right now, I'm not getting to see my students. So I'm psyched to get to see you guys, so hello. Um, I'm just gonna add a splash of vanilla in here. And whoop, this is vanilla extract. If you have vanilla bean and you wanna scrape some fresh, fancy vanilla bean in there, go for it. It's fancy, I don't, I don't usually get to do vanilla bean. All right, so now I'm just gonna lock my Vitamix into place and it's gonna be loud and this is what I do when I don't wanna listen to anybody else in the house. Maybe you've gotten there recently. Okay. Let's So right now, as you can see, and any blender works, um, uh, Vitamix or Nutribullet just does it a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of liquidy right now. You can see it sloshing around. And in just a little bit, like a couple of minutes, it's going to get thick. Um, and what I would do is I'd put them into some canning jars, and then for breakfast or for a snack or for dessert, I just go and I scoop up some delicious, um, really nutritious um, pudding. So instead of a typical pudding, which is loaded with sugar, loaded with fat, um, this has healthy fat. So chia seed is actually a great container of um, omega-3 fatty acids, um, which most people think, oh, I need fish for that. No, you don't. You can get it from seeds and nuts. Um, so flaxseed is another great um, source of, of uh, omega-3 fatty acids, great source of fiber, great source of magnesium and potassium, um, and it makes you feel full. So ch 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 chia long ago, we had no idea that that was healthy. Um, that all that stuff that would just grow hair, we're like, oh, cool. But that's a plant, and you could have been snipping it and eating it as sprouts, and that would just have been, like, that would have blown my head, I guess, when I was a kid, but no one ever told me that. Um, okay, so chia seed, you can sprout any seed, you can sprout any nut, um, and once it sprouts, it gains um, greater nutritional um, uh, density to it. Your body can absorb it a little bit better. So you don't have to blend up chia seed pudding. I do, uh, I find it's a little bit easier to digest if anyone in my house is interested in having some. Um, they, they don't like the texture of um, just regular chia seed. Chia seed doesn't have to be ground. You could have just shaken up milk and chia seed and some cinnamon. Oh, oh, another good thing I should have put in there and I forgot is some fresh nutmeg and I'll go back and I'll do that later. Um, or cinnamon, whatever you like. And uh, so um, it, when it blends up, it like just changes its texture, becomes a little bit more fine. Flaxseed, however, you, your body cannot digest whole flaxseed. You have to grind up flaxseed. Um, don't take the flax seeds um, whole and then think, oh, I'm doing a great job for myself and sprinkle them on top of your oatmeal. You will not absorb them and you'll just poop them out. So you just made very expensive poop for yourself and instead grind it up and then sprinkle it on to your, um, into whatever you're eating. I'm just gonna see what this comment is. questions or anything that I don't cover while I'm talking, please feel free to comment in the video um, below or if I don't get to it while I'm um, talking with you tonight, then um, I will answer you uh, in the live um, video feed underneath it. So feel free to ask any questions. I'm happy to try to help. Um, for people who do live in the Buffalo, New York area, and I think I see someone who is watching, I do these classes out in the community, um, do them once a month typically. 
and every month has a different theme. So I've never done something like this, but it's pretty cool. I was asked by Nancy and Anita, so thanks ladies. Mwah. All right, so um, we're gonna switch gears and while our pudding is pudding, we're going to make a very fast, very easy chickpea stew. And what um, I like to do to get myself in order is I like to pre-chop everything so when I'm ready to throw everything together, I just dump and I don't have to think so much about what I'm doing. So um, with this, today I um, pre-chopped a whole bunch of onions. Now we don't need this many onions. And if you notice, um, I turned on my pan. I don't cook with any oil. And the reason I don't cook with any oil is because oil is very calorically dense and it has no nutritional value. It has just fat calories. Um, I want to eat my fat calories and enjoy my fat calories. I want to like eat seeds and nuts and avocado and enjoy those. Um, I don't need wasted empty calories that are not going to make me feel full from oil. So I always start with a hot pan and the reason I do is when um, vegetables which are largely um, contain water, when they hit the hot pan, they sizzle, they release uh, their moisture at one time if it's hot. If it's not hot, then they'll slowly eke out their moisture content and they will stick. So to avoid that, start with a hot pan, you add your um, veggies when you're ready to add them, and just a little bit, maybe like one to two tablespoons of water. In this case, I'm actually going to use um, some of the broth that was created from when I made my chickpeas, some of my chickpea water. If you didn't make your own chickpeas and you rinsed and you drained your own chickpeas, fine, no big deal at all. I love fresh, fresh made chickpeas though, and I'll talk to you about it at the end, how you make them. Um, I, uh, if you don't have any, you can just use broth, like a vegetable broth. Um, try to make sure that it's low sodium. If you make your own broth, that's great. Then you can control how much salt is in it. But any, um, any store-bought stocks and broth are very high in salt. So you just want to be really careful about that. You actually don't want to have any more than 1,500 milligrams of salt for your whole day. And most people can do that in one meal. All right, so I'm gonna, um, this recipe is on my website and I did share it. It's a, a Spanish stew. And so I think on the rest, on the website it says a cup of onions. I think I probably did a little bit more than that. One of these jars, when I just chop and fill, one of these jars fills close to four cups of onions. And so I probably did about half of that right now. Um, if you can hear over my cooking pan, I have like a um, an electric, pan here, electric um, stove top. This is my chickpea liquid. I'm just gonna add a little bit. And again, because I made my own chickpeas, I don't have any salt in my liquid at all. Woo, hello, facial. Um, so I'm just going to um, saute these onions a little bit. And actually, because it's a stew, I, a lot of times, I don't saute anything. I throw everything into the pot at one time. So I have um, in here, I have um, some chopped green pepper because I had some and I wanted to use it. So I'm just gonna drop that in there. It's one green pepper uh, and I don't know if you know this, but the reason green peppers are much less expensive than red is because green are the immature forms of the pepper and as they um, ripen, they get more red or orange whatever color their natural color is. So I have two cups of onion, about mm, a cup of peppers. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of garlic. I love garlic, so if uh, you're not a huge garlic fan, you can cut down on the amount of garlic. This is not baking, and so you can really mess with the flavors here. If you don't have something on hand, swap it out, switch it out, whatever. Um, I have, uh, in the recipe, I like to use black, um, excuse me, green olives or capers. If you have green olives, great, use the green olives. If you have capers, use capers. I rinse and I drain them. Why I'm doing that is it's gonna give me this yummy, salty, uh, briny taste to it. So reminiscent of like a coastal town. And so I'm gonna just drop those in. I love them. Some people don't like them. If you don't like them, leave them out. Okay, and um, raisins. So I, again, um, any dried fruit if you wish, or no dried fruit if you wish. Um, what I did is I have golden raisins, and just like the dates, they are so much more plump, 
than when they are, look how big that one is, and if it was like just a dry, uh, dried raisin without having it soaked, then it would be really hard and shriveling. So I soak, anytime I use dry fruit, I soak them in hot water. Um, if I run out of time and I'm in a flat and I'm in a hurry, I'll just throw them into some hot water or throw some water and throw them in a cup and put them in the microwave or something. All right, adding them in there and what they're gonna do is they're gonna add just a nice sweetness to the dish. I'm gonna add um, some of my canned tomatoes, which I'm getting sad. I'm running out of my summertime tomatoes and that's sad. Um, but I have a good stock and one of the good ideas, now that you have some extra time, is maybe you can plan a garden. And so um, I've got my seeds started and that's something. And today I was out um, cutting back and burning, <laughs> controlled burns, um, down my um, old winter grasses and things like that. And so it was really great to be outside and I loved it. Now I'm just gonna add my chickpeas and I made my chickpeas in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in a Instapot. And I, if there's interest, if any of you out there would like, I can do a class on how to use your Instapot. So you can just comment if you wanna learn how to do that, if you have one. Canned chickpeas versus fresh, there is like an immeasurable difference between them. I, I, I won't even buy canned chickpeas anymore and I just ordered a 25 pound bag of chickpeas from my local food co-op and I um, went and picked them up and it's a great thing to have on hand, having dried beans, especially when you want to avoid going to the grocery store. It's really economical um, and uh, they store for a long time. I really recommend it. And all it takes is forethought. You just have to soak your beans overnight. So last night I just had to put my beans in water and this morning when I woke up, I just um, uh, rinsed, drained them, covered them back up with water, put them in my Instapot and hit go, hit 13 minutes, that's how, I always, how long I always do it for, and that's it. I didn't have to stir anything, I didn't have to throw away cans, so it's a really nice way to, um, to save money and not waste. So now I'm going to put my liquid in here. And I'm just gonna, you don't have to add it all. You can kind of wait and see how your, um, how the stew is cooking down. And now for our, our spices. So in our spices, I'm going to add, I'm just gonna clean up here for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna do like a um, teaspoon of salt, because I didn't remember I'm not starting with anything that has salt in it, so I make my own tomatoes. Tomatoes, watch out for canned anything. They have a lot of added sodium to it, so I can control that when I do my own canning. Um, or if you just freeze tomatoes, if you get um, tomatoes and you just wanna throw them in the freezer, you can throw, um, chop them up, throw them in the freezer, and then you can um, put them in a bag and just dump them into whatever you have. It's a great economical way if you can purchase in season and then you have like the best food. Frozen foods are oftentimes much healthier than anything canned anyways. Um, sometimes people think, oh, it's not gonna be as healthy because it's frozen. That's actually not true. Things are picked at the peak of their perfection when, they are, um, when they're frozen. So you're actually gonna get a better quality product for less money when you're buying it out of season, frozen, than you are um, fresh. Okay, so now we're gonna do some cumin. I have cumin seed, so I'm just going to show you cumin seed, that's what it looks like, versus ground cumin, okay, which you'd buy, I think, which is, you know, your brown spice, and I love whole cumin. I think that any whole spice um, has so much more flavor to it. As soon as you grind up a spice, you it oxidizes and it loses its uh, intensity. So I am um, gonna let the stew, this is actually gonna be for us for tomorrow, not today, because it's so beautiful out. We're gonna scrap our plans of have, having something cozy. We're gonna save this for tomorrow when it's gonna be raining. And we're gonna grill out and have some nice time outside because it's gorgeous. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put in uh, some turmeric. I'm actually gonna add two teaspoons of turmeric. I'm not sure what my website says to do, but that's what I'm doing here today, folks. Um, and turmeric is a very warming spice. It is yellow. 
Um, and it comes in a root just like ginger does. I have some actually right now in my freezer. It was grown locally. It's from a, um, it's from a CSA. And yeah, you can grow ginger and turmeric. And I'm in zone six in Buffalo. We used to be zone five. Now we're zone six because of, you know, climate change. So um, I added in here, and turmeric is an awesome anti-inflammatory. So in Indian culture, and in Middle Eastern culture, we use, they use, excuse me, not we, they use um, turmeric um, oftentimes instead of Motrin. And so um, here you can um, eat the root if you wanna make a turmeric tea, if you have arthritis, if you have a lot of joint pain, if you have other, anti, if you have other inflammatory conditions, it can help reduce swelling and inflammation. So it's a great spice and I try to add it in whenever possible and it makes a beautiful yellow color to your dish as well. Uh, I like a little heat, so we're gonna add some cayenne. And not too much, because you can always add, just like salt, you can always add, you can never take away. So you wanna be really careful. And how much cayenne do I usually do? I don't know. I'm gonna say a quarter of a teaspoon. I can't read it on my thing right now, can't find it. But I know I like it, so I gotta put that in there. Okay, and then we're gonna do some smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, like regular paprika, is red. Um, smoked paprika, has that smoky barbecue kind of flavor to it. It's gonna give this dish like an extra layer um, that you um, like, huh, what is that? If you don't have smoked paprika, no big deal. If you have regular paprika, throw it in. If you have a little bit of liquid smoke, put like a dash of liquid smoke in here and you'll get the same flavoring um, <clears throat> as you would if you had smoked paprika. Another thing you could have done is if you have chipotle powder, instead of the cayenne, Skip the cayenne, um, skip the paprika, or you could add a little paprika, and do, um, and do, sorry, I'm being distracted by someone behind the camera. Go away, thank you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do, I've lost my train of thought. So I'm gonna do smoked paprika instead of, instead of chipotle powder, but if you have one or the other, feel free. And actually, I think I'm finishing this up, which makes me sad. Okay. Usually what I do with my spices is I actually don't buy them in these containers. I buy them from like in bags. I go to like an Indian market or a Middle Eastern market. These are all such better places to purchase spices and um, any dried good like beans if you don't want to purchase a large amount. Uh, I love, instead of gross, regular grocery stores, I like any specialty market. Also food co-ops are um, much, um, are much more economical places to purchase if you want to purchase in bulk. Don't go to a regular supermarket for your bulk. You're going to pay so much more money. So those are two other great um, avenues for saving money. Okay, so I think we've done our cumin. Oh, cloves. We're going to put a little bit of clove in here. Again, we're just doing a little complexity of flavors as we're layering it in there. And then I'm going to grate in, whoop, I'm going to grate in some freshly ground nutmeg. And if you don't have um, nutmeg like this, no worries whatsoever. Take your nutmeg and you're gonna use your grater again. And uh, if you have it, do this. Uh, it's, again, cheaper, holds its flavor so much longer than anything dried. If you have the dried stuff, the already ground, use that. No big deal. Um, and then, like I told you before, we have our lemons from the lemon zest that we used in our pudding. Instead, now we're going to use the lemon juice so that's why it's a nice thing to be able to do use the same thing again. And so I'm just going to take my lemon and I'm gonna juice it on in to our stew. And I'm gonna actually wait. Um, a, a good thing to do is to take your lemon, squeeze it upside down, hold it into your hand. And that way I have all the seeds in my hand and I didn't have to get any seeds in there. Do you have one of those, you know, lemon squeezers, juice squeezers, use that. Whatever you got. I got some hands right now, so that's what I'm using. Okay. And that's it. I actually am um, gonna add a little bit more chickpea. 
think I'm gonna help this go farther. I have them made, I'm gonna add them in. And then I'll just add my extra broth here that I have. And I think that's it, some fresh pepper. And I wish you could, oh, I hope you're smelling it because I hope you're cooking it with me. I don't know what you're doing right now. But if you're not, I hope you are, or I hope you will. Um, I have a whole bunch of different recipes on my website and free, go get them. I have resources and books, um, cookbooks, and um, great websites. Happy to be a resource to anybody who's interested in um, anti-inflammatory diets. Um, so, oh, I also, I forgot to tell you this, so I am a plant-based chef. I am a teacher, science teacher. I also have a master's in public health, and I went back to school, finished it last May, um, with the hopes of bringing food-based education to a large-scale um, health situation, health setting. Unfortunately, where I live, um, there's not the pull for such education yet, I hope, um, but I do love teaching in any capacity, whatever I can. I'd love to be a resource to anybody out there looking to eat more local, eat more plants, um, eat the rainbow, because if you can consume more fiber in your diet, uh, you will increase your longevity, decreases all-cause um, all mortality, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, so many foods are um, so many plant foods help to decrease the risk of all those diseases while animal-based diets increase your risk for all of those um, all those causes of morbidity. So in here, this stew is, as I said, it's gonna sit. Uh, I'm gonna stop cooking it right now. I'll show you what mine looks like. Um, and tomorrow, oh, I forgot to tell you, I, I did put some bay leaves in here. I think I forgot to say that. So as this is simmering and stewing, the bay leaves will kind of release um, their, their flavor. You don't eat bay leaves, um, but you can eat um, curry leaves. So curry leaves are an awesome flavoring. Um, it's not curry as in curry the spice. Curry the spice is a blend of spices. Curry leaves you can buy in an Indian grocery store. Um, they're very fragrant, they're beautiful, they're great to put with rice which is what I would serve this dish with. I would serve this over some brown rice. Also super easy to make in your rice pot. But let me just show you what this looks like. Um, before I serve this, I would put some dark greens in. So let me come over to you. Ooh. I don't wanna spill it. Can you see? I don't know, hopefully you can see it. Um, so before I serve this, I would put my dark greens in there. I wouldn't serve, um, I wouldn't put my greens in there until right before I want to serve. And, and when I'm ready to eat it, like I would just, if you're going to eat this right now, I would fold my dark leafy greens in here. So if you're doing spinach or Swiss chard or kale, whatever you're choosing to use, um, chop it up. Uh, if it's not baby spinach, if it's baby spinach, just toss the whole thing in. If you're using frozen spinach, fine, no worries. Defrost it and then dump it in. Um, but any uh, fresh grain will just wilt right away as soon as you put it in there. Uh, spinach will wilt faster than everything else, then Swiss chard, and then like collards and kale. They are heavier, thicker leaf, and so they will, won't wilt as quickly. Make sure if you are eating kale or collards in a dish like this, you strip the uh, leaves, and maybe next week I'll do a stripping of kale. Um, very sexy, and I will teach you how to massage it. Very exciting. We need excitement these weeks, don't we? <clears throat> so there you go. All right, so um, now back to our pudding, and then I'll see if I can answer any questions. If you want to see how thick this pudding got, I don't think all of you were with us when I first made the pudding, but it got really thick, okay? So it's like thick, like pudding, and it's sweet, and it's fresh from that lemon zest. It's so delicious. And that's it. You watched me make a whole bunch of food um, and no time flat. So this is basically a one pot meal um, with the, if, when you dumped in your greens. Sprinkle on the top of it when you've presented if you want to have some, if you have some fresh parsley. And if you don't, you can start planting some right now and you can grow your own. Um, grows great in a pot. 
and then I would put, put it on top of some brown rice. So again, um, brown rice, you can batch cook it. You can make it for the whole week. So you can make a whole bunch, cook once, serve multiple times, and turn it into whatever. I'm gonna pop closer to my screen and see if there are questions that you might have. Okay, I think the only question I see is, hi everybody by the way, is um, how long did I blend the pudding for? So as long, I blended it, like I, I put the dates in, I put the chia seed pudding in, put the milk in there, um, the zest, um, uh oh, I'm gonna go back and do a little nutmeg, remember I forgot that, cinnamon if you like it, and I just put it all in at one time and I blended it until I didn't hear any weird noises anymore. And those weird noises would be your dates hitting the bottom of the blender. Um, and that's it. So if you didn't want to blend, um, you wouldn't want to use dates because um, you wouldn't get that chopped up consistency unless what you can do is you can create date paste. So date paste would be, um, and you could use that cup for cup for um, any um, anything that requires sugar. You take a date, take your dates, a whole bunch of dates, whatever, go on a date, um, and put hot water on top of them, and then uh, let them soak for about, you know, whatever, four hours, or um, put, if you wanna keep it raw, do that. Um, if you want, if you don't care about it being raw, you can cover them with some hot water, throw them in the microwave, and for 10 seconds until they soften and they plump up. Put, um, put the dates into a, a blender, cover it with just enough water to get the blender to kind of pulverize it and spin, and then you can create a paste. You can scoop it out, you can do this with any dried fruit, so um, raisins, apricots, dried cherries, whatever. Just please, when you're using any dried fruit, make sure that you're getting a dried fruit without added sugars. Try to get ones without added oils. Dried fruit is great um, for a nice sugary, like I love like this as a dessert. Like just one date, two dates will make you feel like, oh, I'm okay, I got my sweet on, that's good. Um, so with this, um, you just have to get it so they can pulver, uh, spin enough, enough water, you don't wanna get too soupy, scoop it out, it can go in your freezer and it can last for whatever, and then you could use that for your sweetener if you didn't feel like blending up um, uh, your chia seed pudding. If you just want to have it on hand, you make a whole bunch and then you have it, whatever. That, you can do that too. Or if you had maple syrup and you wanted to do a splash or a little bit of stevia or whatever it is that you like to use, just um, stay away um, from refined sugars, please. And I really do like the whole food sweeteners because then you get the added benefit of the micronutrients as well as the fiber. Um, oh, I was talking about dried fruit. So dried fruit, um, really be careful that you're getting it from a source that's not coating it in added sugars and oils. Trader Joe's actually is a great place to buy unsweetened fruit. So they have um, unsweetened dried cherries, mangoes, um, apricots, um, dates, prunes, figs. So those are some great places and they're really inexpensive as well. So I like um, getting some, I get my dried fruit from there whenever I can. Um, I think that's it. Other than I always do a reading um, at the end of my classes. Oh, and I think I'll pull a card too. Let me pull a card first, hold on. And this hasn't worked when I've done it for myself. So I'm gonna pull it for you. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do this, scoop them up. I haven't been successful in pulling my own card. So to anyone who's out there watching, who's not aware of what these cards are, I am a part of an amazing group of strong, powerful women called the goddesses. And um, we are, um, has special cards and we like to share each of them is a person in real life and these cards are made in her image and with beautiful readings on them from 
Um, the paintings are from Anita, uh, and the words are from Nahama, and so they're beautiful. Um, you can find the cards at thegoddessrevival.com. Uh, and so I'm going to hold them to my heart and um, select a card to read. <clears throat> Susan, I got your card. Omnipotent. She is a color in the void, movement in paralysis, vibrancy leaping over stagnation. Ponds of ideation dance with glee into the evening as a wave of wondering, a deep space, dive of divination, expresses in loud silence the origins of it all. Can you handle it? Does it move you, scare you, ignite you? She already knows, omnipotent. Perfect. And then as a closing, um, I just want to uh, read one other thing for you. And I read in my classes, when I do a cooking class, I read from this book called Journey to the Heart. And it's a, it's a daily thing. Um, and so today is March 27th. And usually whenever I open the book, it's something that is right for me um, on that day. And today's, today's is perfect for me. Um, I hope it is for you. It's called Resentments Hurt Everybody. Resentments only hurt ourselves? Not true. Resentments can hurt others too. When we, bre when we brood and allow resentment, resentments to brew and fester, we send negative, mean, hurtful, spiteful energy to others. The more consciously and vividly we do this, the more pain we cause everyone, the more bonded we are with others, whether they're business associates, friends, lovers, or family members, the more powerfully our resentments can impact them as well as us. So if you're busy thinking resentful thoughts about someone close to you or the job or home, consider the harm you're doing to him or her. The more powerful the emotions connected to these thoughts <clears throat> and the closer you are to that person, the more damage you can do. You can sabotage the other person, help keep him or her down. Even if you don't speak your resentments aloud, even if you try to hide the way you feel, the energy is there in the air, hurting both of you. Just as we focus on clearing the air we breathe of toxins, we need to cleanse the air around us at work, at home, from the toxic fumes of resentment. Remember, when we harbor hate, jealousy, or rage, we connect in other ways, to others in other ways that hurt us all. Let's set others free. Let's release our resentments. And along the way, we'll set ourselves and our hearts free too. And so on this beautiful Friday evening in Buffalo, New York, um, I send heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you who joined me this evening and um, I enjoyed my time I prepared for you today. It was exciting to get to prepare for a class. So thanks for letting me do that. Um, and now I will have nourishing food for my family and myself and I will get to enjoy some chia seed pudding. So thanks for helping me make that and push me to do something for myself. And be all be well and check in if you have any questions happy to help in any way but any of the ingredients we used here today if i didn't cover them in detail as to why we use them enough um, feel free to drop me a question and cheers the i am shabbat shalom for anybody who's celebrating